Good evening, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another rage video for our third entrant into our special Super Bowl Bloody Sunday special, where today, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going through the first quarter, I suppose, of mostly doing Kansas-based uh, material, as... Uh, you want to have any, uh, take any guesses as to who I'm backing for this year's Super Bowl final? We are going to be checking out a, what do they call this? A Christian hardcore band, which that's, that's something in the heart. That's, it's, have we ever covered any uh, Christian rock bands since we've been back? No, I, I don't think so. So this should be, this should be, this should be really interesting because there was a lot of things in uh, Carry On Wayward Son that had a lot of uh, Christian underlying tones throughout. In fact, it would be interesting to know exactly where, like, Christian rock really, like, it started. Maybe it could have started around about, like, either the Eagles or even Kansas. So, there might be uh, open discussions certainly later on. And the band we're checking out today is called Underroof. And, again, our first time checking out uh, these guys. So, let's uh, let's see what they got. And if they've got anything that, you know, Philadelphia can match up with. I doubt it, but, you know, let's give them a shot anyway. Uh, I mean that, you know, there's nothing Philly, Philly can do, but let's uh, let's check it out. So, if you guys want to check out the original video for yourselves, links will all be in the description down below. So let's begin. Writing on the walls. In three, two, one, and... And I completely forgot that I didn't even have the sound on. Okay, one second. There we go. You can literally hear everything in these things, except the sound of my own voice, which... Why don't we sit right here for half an hour? I will speak of what a waste I am. Stay, but we're living out of 
Okay, uh, there we go, ladies and uh, the secret. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was. Jeez, that was writing on the walls by Under Oath. I was. Must I must admit, I was not. I, I was so unex. I did not know what I was expecting out of this. But you know what? I. I must admit, it's. It's it's a very it's an interesting one because yes I I get it what they're meant to be asking for is that they're asking meant to be asking for a sign they maybe they, they wanted to be asked for guidance they want some kind of like reassurance to know that maybe just maybe there is some there is some answer something that needs to be answered this speaks very much of we we're desperate for some guidance we want to know. Um, what are we supposed to do next? Or what is it? Can we do more? Do, do we, we, we kind of want some kind of like assurance because maybe the state of our lives is becoming something like, like chaotic or un under fire for something. We feel kind of... Um, and I wonder if this is just like what happens maybe like a lot of Christian rock is that you could tell by the the screaming and the, the and how it's it was more I would say more alternative Christian rock if, if that's uh, technically a thing to say about how just how angry and savage that uh, Aaron Giuseppe or Spencer Chamberlain uh, bo both sound because well th maybe they just want answers or they want somebody to hear them out on the things that they they want to ask and. I think it's a big part in uh, not not just in Christian rock, but to uh, Christians or even or a anybody of any race anywhere to ask for some div some divine intervention, some kind of calling, something that makes you think that they are going to be listened to. Because that's I think that is one honestly one of the biggest uh, things that so many people are turned away from when it comes to religion is that. They feel neglected. They feel like they are not listened to. They feel that their lives are meaningless, pointless, just one harsh reality, one after the other. And the only thing that seems to be constant is that these things continue. And yet they can't seem to think there's any, ooh, any reason these things should continue. So, yes, I do get on, so, on, on, a, on, so, on a certain level exactly that... There is a great deal of like frustration out of these guys and how they just they ask God directly about, you know, give, give us a sign or I hope to God you come down. I hope to God you feel this now. I hope to God you come down. I hope to God. Of course, you, you know, of course, the old adage is that it's very hard for God to make for, uh, for us to make God uh, feel the way that we do, because. It's not so much that there are certain parts in the Bible where God sort of does, uh, well, attribute uh, certain traits that he bestows onto humans because he, God, makes us in his own image. But at the same time, if he was, if, if there were plans for God to literally wipe all humans off the face of the earth before we had the likes of uh, Jonah, for example, then... Who's to say that God in some this is the this is the problem I think maybe some people have with the concept of like divine entities, for example, is that if they are meant to be like omnipotent, uh, omni om, omnibenevent and all all loving, then why would a being who was all loving actually, you know what, not might not actually have a word with people who, who actively want to uh, get into discussions with him? It's, it, 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 you see what I'm get, trying to get at, because, you you it's it is a running theme in maybe some some uh, some of these groups that maybe we why don't we sit right here for half an hour? We'll speak of what a waste I am and how we missed your beat again. It this is literally describing virtually every single mass, possibly on earth. Well. No, no, no. That's a bit not. No, it's not. It's not quite like that. Most of the time, it's meant to be not like that. It's where we're meant to express our love. It's where we're meant to be cheerful. We're not meant to feel like we are so beneath him that the only thing we could do to atone for ourselves for the 
mere crime of existing is just to sit in God's house and say what worthless human beings we are and to follow out his rule. Now, some pe many people would say that you can literally keep God's word without ever having to be told about it. There, it's like this whole um, the I maybe there's some maybe some idea or concept that some people feel like belittled or rather you know condescended to by God or by religion that they think that we can't be trusted to govern ourselves or we can't be trusted to behave in a normal or rational way, and it's again. A highly interesting issue, and it's something that I'm actually kind of glad we we do get to talk about here because uh, talk about a lot of uh, uh, di of divinity and uh, uh, actually talking about my faith is something that I kind of have wanted to bring into this channel for a very long time. I just you got to kind of like find out places where to start. I mean, I could spend long conversations talking about to my dad because. He actually has a, a college degree in divinity and in American history. So it's not as if, you know, he, he wouldn't be short of things to say. I mean, there's plenty of things to be said about people who are not so much like, you know, um, uh, what's the what's the word I want to use? Like frustrated, confused, like they like we don't really know for certain what we're being asked to do or rather if we do know what we're being asked to do, then how come, you know, we, we set out to do it and we, we acknowledge that we're humans, we're not like God. But if we're going to, if there are going to be parts where we're going to fail again and again, then again, does it, then what difference does it make if we tried, well, yet, tried or not? If we're going to make mistakes along the way, then, you know, what's, what's the purpose of this? Is it so that people can continue to look down on us? But then again, why don't we look down our noses on people like Saint Peter? He was the uh, he was the blo he was the man, one of the apostles, who ca almost categorically always got it wrong about Jesus, from diso from not having his feet washed to being f to disobeying him to having to qu having to under really understand about what the idea of the transfiguration was supposed to be about at all and why it was so hard for him to like come to terms with all this and maybe again it's in that small way is why he was bothered to be why we even asked him to be our representative of uh, god on earth uh, after the ascension it's again maybe the whole discussion about you know that like the history of the church from the beginning of well the history of the church really begins in the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. But I'd say probably if you do want to, like, the actual history of the church in terms of why we we choose to believe this, it would probably have to go as far back as the Transfiguration, to the Ascension, to the coming of the Holy Spirit, then to the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, through largely the entire uh, like uh, continuity of St. Paul and maybe even possibly the even the book of the apocalypse there's what I, basically what I'm trying to say is that the the, uh, the continuity about not just when the church begins because the Acts of the Apostles from beginning to end covers approximately the first 60 years of the, uh, of, the, of, the of the of the of the Roman Catholic Church as we know it and then Rev, uh, the Book of the Apocalypse, which also known as the Book of Revelations, the Revela also known as the Revelations of John, also known as the Revelations of Jesus Christ, goes into something a bit more of a more cryptic sort of note. And I've read the entirety of uh, the Book of the Apocalypse twice, and from what I gathered about it, is that it's more of a story that's. Apocalypse more is more of a story about the future, and rather about what the, the what the plans are for for the for the Holy Spirit to continue living on Earth, and they even describe one of the best lines as it is that the Lamb will not lie down in the streets or in the towns or in the cities, and it kind of got me thinking because it's basically at the very end of Apocalypse where they say that God and is everywhere, all around us, in everything. And 
maybe it's just and I, I don't know maybe there are people out there who might be coming who be struggling with maybe their vocation or struggling with the about the concept of is there is there have we got anything to believe in whatsoever that isn't just faith based on faith well the best i could say to that ladies and gentlemen is again check out apocalypse if you ever get the opportunity because in my opinion it's all around us god is in everything god is everything and god is never too far away from all of us and when you've come to realize that is when you can't i mean think about how many other times we confess to people or how many times we talk openly with people it's give it some thought and that will make you realize that you don't have to go too far to ask god to come to talk with us that's that that's and that's a very in my opinion a very reassuring thought it's a it's i'm not saying it's an easy one to come to terms with i'm not even saying that it might not even be the right one however it's always something to hold on to hope is the gift of the holy spirit ladies and gentlemen and even though i know this song was uh, written nearly 17 years ago i do hope for pray for aaron giuseppe uh, spencer chamberlain and uh, let me just check the, who else. Uh, uh, James James Smith, Grant Grant, uh, Grant uh, Brandle, uh, Christopher Dudley, and Timothy uh, McTogue. I do hope that you know and pray that if if they are still if they still believe in uh, in Catholicism and that there is plenty for them to look forward to. Thank you. So anyway. I hope all of you guys have enjoyed this reaction video. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys felt of Writings on the Wall by Under Roof. And I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye for now.